We did not weed this. In some places you can see like a big weed standing up there. What it'll do is grab hold of that weed and pull it right down. And it's amazing how it does that. But uh, it's just like a little octopus. It's one of the warmest days of the summer, a sticky stillness that hit 33 by midday. Lawrence Warburick is checking in on his hops while he waits for that hot sun to dry out his fields, enough for combining. It actually starts with a rootlet. It's called a rhizome, and uh, it's about six or seven inches long. And we plant them in the springtime, and they are here to stay now. So they'll, they'll grow for 100 years if no one touches them. Hops are the things that make beer taste like beer, some aromatic, others creating a bitter, tangy flavor. This one has a hint of grapefruit. If you heard of like the, the hoppy IPAs, they use typically the three uh, C uh, uh, hops, Centennial, Chinook and Cascade. And so Cascade is one of my favorites. It took three years to establish these Cascades. As a farmer, Lawrence knows that good things take time. And so three and a half years ago, he and his brother started a homegrown venture and Lawrence moved his wife and three kids out to Nipawa, Manitoba to start it from the ground up. In order to like pursue the, the dream of a farmery estate brewery, we needed to grow the ingredients that go into our beer. So we needed to experiment with growing hops, which we're doing of course, and uh, get back to farming and start growing barley. Consumers that drink local beers, they, they're definitely interested in uh, understanding where their product is brewed. And we want to go one step further and, and actually show that uh, where the products, where the ingredients are actually grown. With about 130 acres planted, the Warburick brothers are the smallest farmers on the block. The way the fuel prices are going, that the fertilizer prices are going, uh, we don't use any GMOs on our farm. Uh, and I think that if it was only about production and volume, then I think that you'd have to resort to those, those things. But I think that if we can make it uh, uh, sustainable and viable on our small footprint of a quarter section of land, I think that's what, what, how uh, the prairies got settled back in the early 19th century. We knew that we were doing a good job with selling other people's beer. And I think that we really connected to what the consumer wanted to drink and what they wanted to support. Chris and Lawrence are pretty familiar with the 150 beers at their Luxaloon Gastro Pub. Their farmery premium lager is now on tap, even though a lager is not a typical place to start as a brewery. I think it was a very relatable product so that we could, uh, first of all, uh, get the consumer to relate to our, our brand. And later on, we're going to be experimenting with some of those ales and stouts and stuff like that. For now, it's a focus on the lager and on the land that's giving it life. To sustain that, Farmery Brewery is counting on a growing consumer base concerned with where it's getting its food. What we're doing with beer is just no different than that. We're taking it right back to its grassroots and, and you get to know where your beer comes from. At the end of a hot Manitoba day like today, the Warburg brothers are no doubt enjoying drinking their product as much as they are making it. And they're hoping to provide the same experience for consumers in the very near future by building a brewery right here. Just a few kilometers east of Nipua, Manitoba. For Go Winnipeg, I'm Kim Kasher.